Hello, this is Jane Goodall, or Dr. Jane, as many people know me. And of course, I've got with me um, on this special occasion, Mr. H. Many of you will have seen Mr. H, at least in pictures, and he's always with me. And I'm here to congratulate you on your graduation. It's going to be a graduation that you'll remember, a very special and very unique one that most people will never have experienced and we hope they won't have to again. It's a, a virtual graduation. But I want to congratulate you on all your hard work, you students of the 2020 class, on, uh, on your success. And I also want to say hello to all your parents and teachers and family and friends, people who've supported you through these years. And now here you are, ready to move out into a, another phase of your life. So it's a shame for you. I mean, it's usually, you know, this feeling of excitement. You've got family and friends there. You get your degree and you march up and everybody's together. <clears throat> and there's lots of cheering. And, um, <clears throat> and then afterwards you, you celebrate and have a terrific evening. And now you're mostly all separated from each other and you're probably, many of you, still in lockdown. You're doing social distancing and all those things. Some of you may not even be allowed outside. I'm really lucky. I'm in the house where I grew up in Bournemouth, England, and we're allowed to go out with the dog and we've got lovely cliffs and the, the ocean isn't very far away. And outside my window, I can look out and I can see the trees I climbed as a child. So I consider myself lucky. But at this time, as you graduate, it's a time of uncertainty. It's a time when some people are lonely and some people are frightened. Some people are locked down in really tough places like inner city, the townships in South Africa. People are starving, people have lost their jobs. And we have to think of those working out on the front lines, the doctors and nurses and healthcare providers and the people delivering the food and keeping the grocery shops and pharmaceutical shops open. And countries have been fighting to get sufficient protective gear and masks and, and gowns and sanitizers. And gradually nations are coming up and providing these things, but people have risked and lost their lives. And there's hundreds of people who've lost their jobs. The impact on the economy is terrific. And we don't know what's going to happen. So for you, as I say, this is a graduation you'll remember because it's at such a, a, a strange time in our history. You know, I lived through World War II and that was the same sort of thing we didn't know what was going to happen. We were fighting a real physical, visible energy. In in UK, we were fighting the Nazis. And today we're fighting an is invisible, a little sneaky virus, a coronavirus. We're fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. At least the doctors are. So uh, the sad thing is we brought it on ourselves. We've been very disrespectful of the environment, very disrespectful of animals. We've been gradually invading the world of the animals. We've been forcing them to spend more time together, which enables a virus or a bacteria to cross the species barrier from an animal into a human. And we've also been forcing some animals to move out of their habitats to crop raid and things like that because of what we've done to their homes. And we're hunting them, we're killing them, we're eating them, and we're trafficking them. There are wildlife markets in different parts of the world. In China, they've been called wet markets, but they're actually wildlife markets because wet markets just sell fruit and vegetables, a bit like your farmer's markets. And 
there's the bushmeat markets in, in Africa. In America, it's called game. But in all these cases, animals are being disrespected. The wildlife markets are the worst because animals of many different species are crowded together, often in very unhygienic conditions, in tiny cages. They're stressed, they're frightened. And do remember that these are individual beings. They have feelings like we do. They can be stressed and, and frightened, and they can certainly feel pain and fear. And these are the conditions which make it easy for a virus from a certain animal to spill over into a human. And if they find the right welcome there, a cell they can bond with, then that may become a new disease like this COVID-19. We need to remember that we're all in this world together. And I think it would be good if you spend a few minutes on this day, a joyous day, because of all the hard work you've done and because you've graduated. And I should be spending all this time congratulating you, but you will be going out into a new world, a world where some people for the first time have have breathed clean air in some of the big cities. They've never known it before. And they've looked up and seen the stars twinkling in the night sky. And animals are moving out of their habitats into some city streets. It's a different world. And I just pray we'll emerge from it better people, that we'll start thinking about our relationship with the natural world. And the other thing that's happened that is really hopeful, and that is that as the pandemic, pandemic closes down place after place, communities are coming together. And you see the most amazing things happening in the UK. Communities come together and help each other. People offer to take phone calls from people who are lonely or frightened. People volunteer to deliver food that's donated by some of the companies and take it to the health workers or those who cannot go out for themselves. All of this community getting together is something, it, it's the virus is bringing out the best in people. And if we just remember we're part of one world, and if we just remember that we'll never attain our true human potential until this clever brain, and you've all been using your brains like crazy, but remember, it needs to work in harmony with your heart, love and compassion. And I think that's something that you've been learning through these years of your hard work. And take it with you as you move out into the world, into whatever career you want to pursue. And remember, if you don't reach your goal straight away, don't give up. My mother always said to me, if you want to do this crazy thing, because I wanted to go to Africa and live with wild animals when I was 10 in the middle of a war when I was a girl and I had no money. And everybody laughed at me, but she said, you, you need to work really hard and take advantage of every opportunity, but if you don't give up, you may find a way. And of course I did, and you all can too. Even if it's not your original goal, it's perfectly okay if you change course. You have to do what you suddenly realize, this is what I want to do, this is it, this I am going to do, and then don't give up. So once more, congratulations from me and from Mr. H, and enjoy this day, celebrate in whatever way you can, and know that you've done a great job. And as I said at the beginning, you will remember this graduation. Nobody's going to have a graduation like it, I hope, for a very long time, if ever. So enjoy the day and feel good and proud of yourself and celebrate whatever way you can and Skype with family if you're not with them and Skype with friends and have this feeling of togetherness that we can get from communicating with Skype, Zoom and on social media. And so for now, I will say good luck to all of you. Bye.